Okay, so when you start a wipe, this is a cutaway of a base over here. Uh, this is going to represent uh, any setup, right? So if you're starting off, you're like, hey, how do I do just basic power? So just to accumulate power. So there's three different types of storage. There's the small battery. There's the medium battery right here. And then we have the large battery. We're just going to go over some of the specifics here. Just know that this is going to be the most common and the most accessible. You can do this on a workbench one, and there's no tech trash required to craft it. This one is ideal. I don't see a lot of people using this. This one's great uh, as it uh, has decent output. It's obviously a lot bigger than this one. Uh, this one requires tech trash, one piece of tech trash in high quality to make, which makes it expensive if you're solo. And this is the biggest boy uh, that takes two tech trash and high quality to craft, and it's very expensive. And you cannot buy this anywhere. You have to find it in the loot tables. Now, this little guy you can buy at the Bandit Camp for 75 scrap. Beautiful. Uh, but in most cases, if you're just getting started off, usually just a, a small battery will do. But I always tell people, no matter what battery you have, start off and start charging your batteries as soon as possible because you can pick it up and it keeps the charge no matter what. So if we go ahead and look at the small battery real quick, let me get the text over on the dark area there. You can see this maximum output is 10 and the capacity is 150 rust watt minutes. All that means is how long it can run, the RWM, and the maximum output is literally how many power units you can put out and then that's it. Then we have the medium battery that goes for 50 maximum output and the uh, capacity is 9,000 rust watt minutes, and the big boy, uh, his maximum output for power is 100, and the capacity is 24,000 rust watt minutes. Did I say nine over here? I meant 9,000. Anyways, I know it's a lot of information at once, but just know that if you get any of these, just start, just start charging it as soon as possible. Okay, so the other piece that you're gonna need here are the types of, this is storage, by the way. <laughs> um, but the next big piece is going to be how do you generate power? And there's three different types. Let me just kind of zip it out here so you can see this. Hopefully the uh, the wind turbine goes up. This is the biggest one. If you're running solo, yep, we're too close. Oh, no, we're not. If you're running solo, I tell people just don't put this up. It's so big. And nothing says raid me quite like having this giant thing on stilts. Uh, it's really good, uh, but it's very it's variable throughout the day. It'll run during the night, but it goes up and down, and it changes from day to day. So that's its pro and con. Uh, the next one, and by the way, this also needs to be elevated for it to be more efficient and not obstructed. So the way we have it set up now is actually the worst way to use this. You want this as high as it can be and not obstructed by other wind turbines or, or especially structures. It's very um, sensitive. All right, so the next piece we have here is our good friend, the solar panel. Uh, let me go ahead and just make a little platform here for it right quick. My good friend, the solar panels. And so here, um, you're going to have a day and night with these, right? Or I'm sorry, a, uh, a morning and afternoon. Jeez. So I know this doesn't follow the real world, but if you see, I'm actually facing northeast. That's for morning in r the rust world or the rust island. And for the afternoon, it's southwest. And even if you have one of these, I tell people, just, just start charging your batteries as soon as possible. Um, these are nice. Uh, they go from 1 to 20, depending on the time of day. And if you have them set up like this, you can combine these to have uh, anywhere between 1 and 40 units of power during the day. So uh, the beauty of this is it's very consistent from day to day. It does not run at night, clearly, and it has a lower output. But the other bonus of this is the footprint of this guy is low profile. So like, let's say you're down, way down here, and you're looking at the top of a base, you're not going to see the solar panels. Y you know what you are going to see? You're going to see this thing. So there are pros and cons to each. Okay, so let's go on to the last one here, which is the uh, generator. Just making like a little line out here, like it's Tron. Uh, this one is not passive. This is going to cost you low grade to run. Uh, which is not bad. Um, it's it's really not. So you can put... I threw it on the ground like an idiot. <laughs> yes, I did. I thought I put it in there. Deedleep. Okay. This one's cool. It puts out 40 units of power total. It's just going to run off of the low grade. Um, so you can run roughly three turrets off this bad boy if you really need to. Uh, it's also a good way to help speed charge your other stuff because you can mix sources. So out of these three... Uh, you can combine these together any way you see fit. We'll go over that in a second. Okay, so now that you know some of the basics, 
Let's go ahead and just throw up, um, we'll, we'll start with a small battery because that's more realistic. Let's say you're in your base here and you're like, okay, uh, I just found this, so let's let's start charging it. So you, you place it and you go, okay, now, now what? <laughs> you know? So what you want to do is, let's just say, it's more realistic that you'll have something like a solar panel. So we'll go up here and set just one up for the time being here. And what you can do is, as soon as you have your wire tool, you can bust it out. Um, if you would like to change the color, if your wire tool is out, you hold the reload button, and then you can select one of these wires. We will select blue. Blue? Yes, blue. And all you have to do here is you will just tap, is it left trigger? And then you can start placing cable. Oh my goodness, I fell off the roof. And if you see the numbers on the screen, the large number represents the distance, and the small number represents how many points you can do. And if you're up here going, man, that's not what I meant to do, you can hit the right trigger. As long as this point is away from the one you place. So if I go out here and just hit right trigger. Oops. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, there you go. See how it's like disappearing? It goes back one point. Is that polar bear trying to scrap? So it's really nice. Uh, or if you just kind of go off of the wire tool and come back, it'll, it'll stop. So, oh my goodness. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and do this. We'll do this for simplicity's sake up here. I will just run it straight down the wall, okay? Normally I tuck this under, and we can talk about wire management a little bit later. That's a bit more advanced because I never... You want to hide the wires because it really says where the batteries are at. And I don't know about you, but when I raid, if I see... If someone's nice enough to point in the direction as to where I need to hit, that's always quite helpful. So that's always nice. Okay, so let me go ahead and make sure real time is on. I have admin time, so let me turn that off so you guys can see, because obviously this is sensitive to, and I knew it was nighttime, I just knew it. So let me set the server time to morning. And so, okay, when it catches up here, okay, yep, the server caught up. Uh, because this is the morning side of the solar panel, we're getting a maximum of 20 power. So that 20 power is going down this blue wire, and you can see the marching ants going down the wire, telling you the direction, my legs. And it's going into the input, the blue side of this battery. So you can see it's slowly going up. See, it's 26, 27, there it goes, slowly over time. So you're like, sweet, I got a battery, I can do stuff. So essentially, you've already wired up your base to actually collect power. Now, it gets a bit more advanced than that. So uh, one of the things you can do, let's just put up some things that you would typically use. Uh, let's say you have one of these in your base, and if you look at the description, it says it uses three units of power. So you're like, oh, can my battery run that? So you walk up to the battery, you look down and go, yeah, my maximum output is 10, and I'm not using any right now. So let me go ahead, let's change it to red, and connect up the heater. Why not? Oh, nice. So the heater's using three units of power. Let's go ahead and look at the battery. And if you look now... Uh, you can see that uh, the active usage, let me just stay in the shadows, it's a bit easier to read that way. Uh, the maximum, uh, I'm sorry, the usage is 3, and the maximum amount is 10, and you can see our capacity is at 40, and it's slowly going up. That's because the power going in, let me go ahead and look at the blue node, is 20 right now. So we're actually charging this at a rate of 17, excuse me, <laughs> instead of 20, because we're actively using 3. So you're probably... I mean, at least this I did. I looked at this and went, hey, is there any way I can turn this off when I'm not in the base because I'm wasting power? Don't we sound all like our fathers or mothers? Uh, I don't know about you, but my dad always would be like, shut out the lights all the time. So what you can do is take another fantastic item called the switch. And if you look here, it does take one unit of power. So we're going to place it on this cable here and then rewire everything else. So we're going to take out the wire tool, disconnect that node by holding the right trigger on top of it. Uh, let's make sure we're on red again. Yes. So I'm going to take that, left click, and then go up here to the bottom of the switch where it says electric input. Click right there, and then we'll go up here to the top of the switch, and then we'll connect up the heater again. So now if we look at the battery, it's going to tell us exactly what's going on, and it says we're not using anything. That's because the switch isn't on. So if we turn this on, now the battery is being used. So if we go back down, if we go back down here, uh, you can see that our active usage is now four as opposed to three. That's because this switch is using some of the power, but when it's off, it's not using any. So that brings up another great point: that anything in this game that's electric, just assume it uses at least one unit of power or more. In most cases, it uses one. 
So as you start to pass things through the circuit, see how the lines are going up through here? Uh, you're going to be consuming more and more power as you start to put more and more things on it. And some batteries can't sustain that. Uh, this one has a pretty, pretty low cap. Uh, it's 10, and we're almost halfway there with just this. And then if you add something like, I don't know, uh, a, a lamp, a love light. Where's lamp? Lamp, you moved. Lamp. So we could place a lamp up here. And if we wanted to keep going, let's just make this one, I don't know, orange. So you can see on the end of the heater, there's a power in, and now there's a pass-through, which is very handy. We can, uh, you know, let's make this green, because I've consistently done that as green throughout the tutorials. So we'll take this cable, we'll stick it on the ceiling, and we'll run it across, and we'll connect it to the light. So now, the light and the heater and the switch are all using power. So if we go back to this main switch here and take a look, we can see that now we're using 6 out of the 10 power units, and our maximum charge left um, slowly but surely is 12 minutes. Um, so that really comes into play when it's nighttime like this. Uh, let me change the server time to this. Hopefully I have a headlamp on or this is going to get really dark. So if you look now, we're consuming power. Obviously the solar panel is no longer generating power. See, we, I, I told you. So zero. So why that's important is if you look at our circuit, it's now using six units of power and we have 12 minutes and it's counting down. That's because we don't have any power coming in on the blue side. So, because of that, um, the night times in Rust, I believe, are 10 minutes. So, we will last the night time just barely. So, you can start to see how um, having your, your, uh, your consumption in just such a way that it's going to help you um, keep a battery charge, maintain it, uh, gather more, and then you can start to see, like, hey, I, I really need to be looking at my active usage. And it's always important to put a switch after your battery. So anything that comes out of your battery, I always tell people, make a switch. It just helps you with power consumption. And sometimes you need to have things off, and that's okay. So, like, in this case, because it's now daytime, this is uh, a bit easier. Did I make that actual daytime? Okay, yes. So this is now gaining charge. Um, so you're probably asking the next question. So uh, can I do, like, two solar panels? to make this charge even more efficiently because that's cute like it's at its maximum 20 but like think about this once we go past the afternoon because this is the morning panel uh, what happens to our charge well it slowly starts to go down and then eventually hits zero so that's why when you do get two solar panels you really want to make sure that you're putting them together as much as possible so that's this is morning so that's facing northeast afternoon is southwest uh, that gives you the most ample charge I know it's kind of uh, diagonal to like what it should be in real life but that's okay so if you're out there in the wilderness I'm sure you'll find one of these red boxes here this is called a root combiner it's very important so if you look at the power usage it does say one but just know that it really doesn't use one unless you're using it on the red side of the battery so the power output if it's on the input side they don't consume so just keep that in mind okay so if we have two sources of power here uh, we're almost done with this by the way uh, I'll place this up here for example purposes, but a lot of times, not only will I keep this wire under the lid here, uh, you'll see me put root combiners also on the ceiling. Because, yeah, I just don't want people messing with it. All right, so we'll take the same setup here. We'll take something that's, I don't know, pink this time. And we'll take that, and then if you look here, I can just feed it into the bottom of the root combiner. There's two spots for the input. And we'll make this one, I don't know, bright blue maybe. And then if we take this one here... We can walk it down to this side and then plug it in here. Oh, look, we're getting 12 here. And now we're getting how much over here? Ooh, 20. So if we look on the end of the root combiner, so the purple line and the light blue line together are now generating 32 units of power. And because we're on the positive side, or the input side, rather, of the battery, um, this root combiner is not going to consume power. Did I make that regular blue? Is that bright? It's so bright during the day, it's hard to tell, right? Anyway, so we'll take the blue wire and we'll bring it back down again. And we'll put it in the battery. So now the charge rate is going to be even higher. So if we look on the blue node here, you can see that uh, we've got 33 units of power coming in and it's going up much faster. So that's one of the many ways you can set up your base with power and even combine different sources of power or even the same sources of power just like that. So uh, real quick, if we were to get sloppy here before we uh, end this particular segment, if you wanted to, let's say you're inside your base and you wanted to add 
uh, generator power to the mix, you can do that. And you would do it the same way you do the solar panels. You place down another root combiner. <coughs> and in this case, I'll place it right here. And so we'll break this connection that goes downstairs. We'll have, uh, we'll have this one be green, I guess. So the output from the generator is going to be green. We're going to take it up here and then run it up to this root combiner up the top. And now these two combined here, uh, let's make that, I guess, yellow. And we'll connect it to the root combiner up here. So now we still have all of these being combined, as we did before. And you'll see that the charge is relatively the same if the sun stayed in the same position. But what's cool is if we look down here, we're getting 34 units of power just because the sun's shifted in our favor. So we have a little bit more. But if you really want to kick it up, because remember, this generates 40 units of power, you can turn this on. So now we have this generating 40. We have each individual solar panel. This one's doing 20. This one's doing, uh, where's, where are you? 15, so we've got 35. So just these two solar panels alone are 35 units of power. Plus the 40, that's going to make it 75, is that right? yeah, 75 units of power on this side, if my math is correct. And sure enough, so now you're charging this battery extra fast. But here's the other thing. Now that we have 75 units of power coming in, uh, we're running into a hard wall here. So if you look at the maximum output, it's always four times. Um, whatever the maximum output is, that you can do four times that for the end. So actually, if you take that and multiply it, it's 40. So we're well past its maximum uh, input. And that's fine. It's not going to destroy anything. The only problem is that extra power is wasted. So you're like, what can I do? Well, you can always upgrade to another battery. Something like our good friend, the medium battery. So let's go ahead and do that. If you look at its output, it's 50. So if you multiply that times 4, it's 200. So because we got 76 now, um, this can definitely handle that input. So, And don't forget, the medium battery is sold at the Bandit Camp for 75 scrap. I usually tell people if you have 75 scrap, just go buy it. Because to learn it is 75, and then to build it, you're going to need Tech Trash anyways. So you might as well just buy it off the rip. And then if you want to learn it later, you can. Or you might get lucky, and then you can, you know... Just find it in the wild. Okay, so now if we're looking at this main battery here, it's going to charge much faster. We have 77 units of power. Its ceiling for maximum input is 200, so we have lots of room here. This is charging quickly. And this also brings up another great example. Even though we don't need this right now, it... Oh, oh, dude, do we really max that out that fast? That's hot. Uh, this is at its maximum charge. Keep it, keep it on the floor or pick it up and store it in a box. Yes, they do maintain their charge even when they're in a box. Uh, and we have tested that on the console side, and it does. Now, I'm hoping that we get the little output on the uh, dialog box that says that it's charged. But I, I can assure you we've tested it. We picked them up. We tried to charge. They definitely do keep the charge. I just don't know if we have the information on it yet. So what you do is you pick this bad boy up. You put it in the box, and it's good to go. And I always tell people to do this because you never know when your battery is going to run out of juice. You're getting raided. Or if you need to set up a fob somewhere and raid somebody. Always collect power. It's a resource, a very valuable resource, because it translates to your ability to run things or to keep up your defenses on your base. See this little guy right there? Boom, 150 out of 150. Good to go. And then one quick tip is I usually, when I place them down again, I try to hit them with a hammer to repair them. Uh, so it's the minimum amount of repairs that you need. Don't do it on the bench because it's going to give durability damage. Um, so, you know, it's like that. There you go. Hopefully that helps answer how to wire up your base if you're just getting started. And this can also be applied to things like turrets, um, sprinkler systems that will be coming in soon enough. So there you go.